habitually healthy people out there. Welcome back to another astonishing episode of Healthy Habits. My name is Michael Serpel, and this week we will be talking about the great outdoors and the social and health benefits that are associated with getting out of the hustle and bustle of suburbia, pitching up a tent, seeing the starry night sky, breathing in the fresh air, and truly embracing the beauties of untouched nature. Now, for this week's episode, we brought a man who is more equipped to nature than Bear Grylls himself. A man who won't resort under any circumstances to drinking his own fluids. Mm, nice and sweet anyway. A man who knows the outdoors like no other. His name is Sartak Sav Ilwadi. He is the social media manager, marketing manager of the RMIT Outdoors Club or otherwise known as ROC or ROC. Biggest rock climbing club in Victoria as well, if you don't mind, which is an amazing club at RMIT that hosts a range of exciting and exhilarating outdoor activities. Firstly, Sav, tell us a bit about yourself and what your role is within the RMIT Outdoors Club. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. So basically, I'm a student at RMIT and I love the outdoors. Like nothing can replace the country sunshine or like the sound of the stream. You can't replace that with any amount of concrete. And as much as I love living in cities and I have lived in cities all my life, you just got to appreciate the outdoors. And that's when I found the Armadi Outdoors Club. And like my journey of Melbourne is my journey of the Outdoors Club. It wouldn't be the same. Like Australia wouldn't be the same if it wasn't for like these bunch of 600 people. And it's just changed my perspective on so many things. I love it. What an incredible journey for you to get into the Outdoors Club. And I think for all those international students listening out there, they'll take a lot of confidence from what you've said about how the Outdoor Club has shaped your time in Melbourne. I mean, you've been able to see the state of Victoria in such a different way. Yeah, absolutely. Like Victoria is massive. People like come to Melbourne and don't realize the potential that Victoria has. And as an international student, you don't really know what's past the inner suburbs sometimes. And this is a great way to find out, mostly because we have carpooling and we have our own gear. So like, even if you're a, me, a student who has no money, no car. That's a lot of students, Sam. That is a lot of students and I'll put my hand up as well and say that's me. Yeah. <laughs> So all you have to do is sign up like the carpool is arranged by the trip leader and like all the gear is ours and you can take them for personal activities as well. For me as a social media and marketing manager for the club, it's the easiest job ever. I have to do nothing. I just have to like talk about the club and everyone's like, wow, where were you my entire life? And I'm like, I know, right? And I'm sure a lot of people are wondering right now, Sav, where have you been all of our lives as well? But thankfully, <laughs> Healthy Habits is able to bring it to their living room about how good the RMIT Outdoor Club is. And as you mentioned, the biggest club at RMIT as well. How about that? <laughs> what made you, as you mentioned, you absolutely love nature and you love being amongst nature. What made you so attracted to that? And what are some of the health benefits of being in the great outdoors? A personal sneak peek into my life was I lived in North India and North India is very close to the Himalayas. And wow we have a lot of very, very big rivers. And I would go for these camps and stuff. And that's where I just got hooked on kayaking and rafting and all these great activities. And it was the great Victorian outdoors that made me want to come here. So as for the health benefits of going outdoors, so vitamin D helps treat depression, cancer, and heart disease. Those three are reasons alone to make you want to go outdoors. Mm -hmm. And scientific studies have shown that in nature, you have effects on your mental and physical body. And the brain has shown activities that is associated with uh, emotions of empathy and love when outside in the nature compared to when inside, uh, which shows activities which is associated with stress and fear, which is like when you're in man-made structures. And there was a scientific study about 200,000 people that when you're inside, you're sitting and that increases your chances of premature death. So there's just tons and tons of scientific evidence to prove it. And this is regardless of whether you exercise or not. Like if you're sitting, you're 
increasing your chances of mortality. Is there a better pitch to the club than that? Absolutely not. No, that is the absolute best pitch out there. If you don't move, you die young. And you, you need to get out and you need to get into nature. That is extraordinary. Sav, you mentioned that you absolutely love your caving. You love rock climbing. What kind of awesome outdoor activities does the RMIT Outdoor Club offer? Well, our whole idea is everything and for everyone. And we mean it. Doesn't matter what your age is, doesn't matter where your background is, and doesn't matter what activity you want to do. We mostly got you covered. So we do rafting, kayaking, caving, rock climbing, bouldering, hiking, camping, of course, snorkeling, surfing, mountaineering, skiing, downhill, and cross country. If you actually join a club and you want to do your own activity and we have the equipment for it, like you can become an uh, activity organizer with a club pretty easily. So as one philosopher once said, 80% of university is showing up. So show up. Now, Sav, we've all heard the adage, camping is intense. Whoa! No, it's not. Will there be any fines for students that mention that on their first camping trip? <laughs> no, of course not. Camping is a bit intimidating at first, but wh when I saw camping first, it was like, what, we're going to sleep outside in the forest but it's actually pretty simple mostly when we're going camping if you're not going on a hike it's going to be around some kind of facility we have one person who has first aid, a male and a female and we also have the closest hospitals and everything listed so it's all in a very controlled environment but as for the camping itself you don't need that much stuff it's food water and the tent itself a couple other things that are helpful are a torch and matchsticks. <laughs> so many people prefer lighters these days, you know, yeah. the, the matches can be very yeah. tedious to get lit. <laughs> hey, they're not, they're not burning. Well, they, they were burning when I lit them. I feel like at RMIT, we almost need a class introduction to match lighting because I, <laughs> I, think, I think it's a skill that's completely out of the repertoire of a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> for all those viewers out there who may be compiling their wish list for travel, what are some of your favorite places to explore in the state of Victoria? My personal favorites have been the Grampians. The sunrises and sunsets over the Grampians are the best. Cathedral Ranges. So if you come with us during the second semester, which is now, um, you would go for an intro trip to Cathedral Ranges. And we've chosen that location because we can do multiple things. Phillip Island for surfing purposes and Wilson's From for everything and anything. Snorkeling is the most famous thing we do over there. Wow. Sav, all right, sign me up. How can a student join the club? Well, it's pretty straightforward. We have our own website. So it's roc.org.au and you'll see a sign up button over there, which will lead you to RMIT's site. You'll get an email. It's 50% off for you if you're a student at RMIT and you can join even if you're not a student and you pretty much get treated the same way. Part of my job is also um, getting discounts. So if you go to brands like Paddy Pal and, and MacPack, and if you remember, you'll get discounts from their online websites and in stores. So that's another benefit. What if students have never done any kind of outdoor activities before? How can they get comfortable and involved with the wide range of activities that you've mentioned, Sav? Our trip list, it specifies if it's a beginner friendly trip or if it's an intermediate trip or an advanced trip and the trip leader will only let you come on if he thinks you're capable of doing it. A lot of our trips are beginner friendly and in fact that's how most of the people who are doing advanced trips at this point of time have started by doing beginner friendly trips at the club without having any prior experience. So it's probably the perfect and the cheapest way to learn anything. Now today, I am happy to announce we have a brand new segment for this week's episode called Sav's Quick Campfire Questions. Oh yeah, let's get cracking into it. All right, my first question to you is schmores or marshmallows? Schmores. For those people out there who don't know, what is a schmore? Shpo is a roasted marshmallow. If a bear is sniffing at your tent, you... <laughs> Throw your food out. <laughs> I'm not kidding. If you're camping in Canada, you need to put your food in a cage, not in your tent. In fact, we had food in our tent uh, when we were in the Wilson Sprom and uh, some wombats made holes in our tent. <laughs> I have video evidence. <laughs> that is extraordinary. We need to get a copy of that video. Now, camping or glamping? Camping all the way.
peanut butter jelly, otherwise known as PB and J, or a Vegemite sandwich? I think this is a tough one for you. For me, it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> PB and J all the way. <laughs> that was my middle school lunch for you. <laughs> what is a better fuel for your campfire? Your past exam papers or an entertainment weekly magazine? <sighs> past exam papers. Gotta be. Unfortunately, our mighty students don't get any exam papers in paper, so we might actually have to move on to the weekly magazines. I would rather encounter Bigfoot or Predator. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Predator is hunting you actively on this planet to kill you. Bigfoot. Bigfoot might just be a very big-footed guy, or for all we know. Tree sap or eucalyptus leaves for a last resort survival snack. I'm just going to go with tree sap. <laughs> it, it kind of looks like honey. I don't think it tastes like honey, but it kind of looks like it. So you can be tricked. <laughs> Ignorance is bliss. It certainly is in this situation, Sav. Now, kayaking or white water rafting? Well, it's absolute kayaking for me. When you're kayaking, you're personally liable for everything that happens to you. So when you're rafting, it's a team effort and um, kayaking is very much hands-on and it's, it's more exhilarating. And you know what? Don't be too afraid to capsize because it is very, very refreshing. Yep, absolutely. It's also very refreshing to pull the boat out and drain it and then get back in it. Very refreshing indeed. <laughs> All right, this one might be a tough one for you. A high ropes course or rock climbing? High ropes course. Everyone's going to kill me at rock for not choosing rock climbing, but uh, ropes course is made in a way that it's more fun. But rock climbing is just like you're out in the wild. It's a hard choice. I'm going to go with ropes course. What is the best camping snack to take with you to the great outdoors? And I'm guessing it's not tree sap. Our personal favorite meal, like we arrange group meals, it's snags. <laughs> Snags are a very, very good choice. Do you cook any damper? Yes, so we do cook damper um, and we made some on a trip to Brisbane Ranges. I think you will like it a lot. Final question, Sav. If you spot a shooting star in the night sky when camping, what do you wish for? COVID to go away. That's pretty easy <laughs> at the moment, isn't it? Just before COVID, I was thinking uh, me being able to roll. So it's basically the practice of when you go upside down in CAC, you're coming right side up by doing this really specific maneuver. It's the next step for me uh, in kayaking and I would want to do that. And Sav, where can our intrepid viewers find you if they have any further questions about the topics we discussed today? I would imagine firstly they'd find you with a compass. <laughs> Maybe with GPS. I'm at at the Ritz Artikulwadi if you want to personally message me. Or you could just email at sponsorship at rsc.org.au. Email me if you need any sponsor codes. As for the club Instagram, please follow RMID Outdoors Club on Instagram. We keep posting all of our beautiful scenery that we capture and amazing people that we meet. And all of our interesting episodes about how to do knots, which is coming up. You do not want to miss out on that, that is for sure. <laughs> there were going to be a lot of camping puns today. <laughs> <laughs> And Sav, is there any final overall messages that you'd love to leave with us today? I would just like to say that it's really about being outdoors and it's healthy for you no matter who you are, what you're dealing with in life. It's a good thing to do for yourself mentally and physically as we discussed. So even if you don't join the club, please go outside, please exercise, stay healthy mentally and physically, especially during this lockdown and it'll all be good soon. Absolutely, it will be. Sav, thank you so much for your beautiful encouragement and for your time today. Stay safe, happy and healthy during this period of time. And you've inspired me personally to pitch up my tent and boil the billy outside. Yep, absolutely. And keep the mask on. Absolutely. Very, very important you keep the mask on as well. Remember, you can find all of our new episodes of Healthy Habits via the RMIT Sports website, YouTube channel, and on Instagram at RMIT Sports. And be sure to check out the RMIT Outdoors Club, as Sav mentioned, on Facebook and their website, also through their Instagram page as well. It has been an intense episode of Healthy Habits. See you next time.